crafty friends this is chelsea and welcome back to another creative design team video this month we are talking all about dads and so i'm going to be using this stamp of the month this sprigs and sentiments stamp and thin cuts and then also probably some splatter from that perfectly imperfect set uh, i'm going to do a two-page layout and i'm using these gorgeous cardstock pieces from the hope and kindness collection it looks like it's been gessoed or painted over, but that's actually just printed right on the paper. I'm not using a whole bunch of pattern paper, but I am going to use little strips of it. And this is also from the Hope and Kindness collection, which is the special for May. This Harbor cardstock is also from the Hope and Kindness cardstock pack. I could have used just regular plain Harbor cardstock instead of this textured looking one but this is what I had out on my table, so I just grabbed it. I'm going to be arranging my photos kind of in a large strip all the way across. So I have one four by six on the left there, and then I have four three by fours that I just trimmed a little bit off of the width to make them a little bit narrower. Cut this half circle on my Cricut, and then I used the offset feature to cut the green cardstock so that I could layer that behind it and it would match perfectly. I really wanted to use the May stamp of the month. It has that beautiful mountain scene in it and some really nice sayings. So I'm gonna start off with that first on this circle. I'm planning to create a whole kind of little mountainscape design. I'm using intense black ink and I'm just gonna stamp first in the middle. And then I stamped the right side, but I couldn't show that because I got my head in the way of the camera. So I will show you me stamping the other side. I'm just masking off the little sun because I thought it would be a little strange to have two suns. So I ended up with a whole strip of mountains going across this large circle. And now I'm going to use some washi tape to mask it off and start ink blending. This washi tape is nice and thick, so it works great for this. I'm grabbing my Glacier ink and then I'm going to be using brushes for this because I want a lighter application of ink and I'm just blending the kind of water section right now. You can see I'm tapping off on my scrap paper just so I don't get too much ink going down when I initially touch the brush to the paper. It just allows for a softer application. I'm starting right next to the washi tape, so that's where my ink will be the darkest, and then it will kind of fade off as I get farther away from that washi tape. Now I'm only going to use the one blue color. You could use multiple shades if you wanted to, but I am slowly peeling that tape off, trying to make sure that I don't rip the paper, and then I am going to reapply it, but masking off the mountains. I love that there's a really clear horizon line between the mountains and then also the reflection of the mountains just makes it really easy to color it up. I am also grabbing some Harbor ink here. Uh, it's kind of a dark tealy blue color and I'm going to use a little bit of this on the mountains. I thought it would be nice to reflect the blue that's in the water up into the mountains. And then I'm grabbing toffee, which is a light brown, and I'm going to blend that on top. So it might seem like kind of a weird choice at first, but I like how it turns out in the end. I'm applying color in circles to try and keep it nice and soft. And also because these are quite large brushes, I don't have a lot of detail brushes. I'm trying to stay away from the very edges of the design. Next, I'm gonna switch over to the yellow Sundance color and start with my color right on the sun and then just blend it out a little bit from there. And I am going to blend a little bit outside of where the sun is uh, just because I think it looks a little bit more natural not to have just a little ball of sun. And then I'm grabbing the papaya color, which is kind of an orangey pinkish color. And I'm just going to add some of that to the sky. I debated if I should add some blue to the sky, but then I thought I'd go for more of a sunset look and create a little bit more variation between the water and the sky. Now, since we're focusing on fathers and ideas for Father's Day, I'm actually making this layout kind of as a little gift for my husband for Father's Day, uh, but it would also work great for pictures of your grandpa, your dad, uh, family pictures. It doesn't have to just be masculine, but uh, I don't make masculine pages very often, and you'll see later I do sneak in a couple of flowers here and there. 
And now it's time for the big reveal. It's so satisfying peeling off that washi tape and seeing your whole scene come together. This set comes with a really nice sentiment that I knew I just had to use somewhere on my page. It says, strength doesn't come from what you can do. It comes from overcoming the things you once couldn't. And this goes right along with the journaling that I'm going to put on this page. So I knew I had to include it somewhere. Now you can see I'm stamping the little clouds down on this sticky note and I am going to cut them out and use them as a mask. And now I'm using second generation ink to stamp some clouds. So you see I stamped, I put a cloud mask over top and then I stamped the smaller cloud. So this way you can cluster your clouds but you don't just have the overlapping lines. And I'm going to repeat this on the other side. I am using Harbor ink and that's why I'm stamping off and using second generation ink just because I felt like full strength Harbor ink would be a little bit too dark. Now you can see I'm struggling a little bit here with my cloud placement. What I wanted to do was stamp a third cloud and then I realized I would need to create another mask and I didn't really didn't want to do that so I decided to just stamp it a single one off the edge there and that worked out fine. There's several little images in this set that support the scene building aspect. And this little bird one is awesome. I love that it's just a single bird so I can tilt them and place them in groups or singles wherever I want to kind of fill up my sky. And I'm just using black ink for this. Now as my last step on this scene, I wanted to add some little trees. So I'm taking the New England Ivy ink and I'm gonna stamp it off and use second generation ink again. And I'm just adding some trees along that horizon line between where the mountains stop and the water begins. And I thought I would stamp off because I didn't want them to be too distracting. I just wanted them to add to the scene, not steal the whole show. And really I'm just kind of, you know, adding little groups, adding singles, just keep stamping until I think that looks right to my eyes. Now, if you haven't noticed for these small images, I'm using a one by one inch block and I love using these little blocks for tiny images. I use that for my clouds, for the birds, for the tree. I find the larger the block I use, the more often I end up getting like lines of ink where I don't want them. So if that's something you struggle with, I definitely recommend trying to choose a size of a block as close to your stamp image as possible. And this is where I am going to leave it. This is the whole stamped panel. I love this as a big feature on part of my page and then with that awesome sentiment on it, I think it's really gonna make that page pop. Next up, I'm attaching this down with lots of ATG tape and I'm just going to try and get it right in the middle of that green half circle. And then this is gonna get stuck just underneath the top edge of my photos there. I have a little die cut uh, craft flag from the die cuts that coordinate with this collection, as well as two strips of the pattern paper that I used on the left page. Just trying to tie that in a little bit more so I have some more pattern on the right page and I'm cutting a little flag end on them, so a snip in the middle, and then I go up from each corner to the top of that snip to make flags. I plan to layer the green over top, and then when I started looking at it, I thought, no, I wanna stick it underneath. <laughs> so I just kinda peeled up that polka dotted piece, stuck down that longer banner, and then I'm just gonna tape that heart pennant over top. I debated popping it up with some foam dots, but I decided just to stick it down flat this time. Next up, I wanted to die cut some tags. So I'm using the buildable tag set and I cut one from white with a little craft reinforcer and then one from that polka dotted paper. Originally, I thought that white one would be perfect for some journaling, but that was not to be because I had way too much to say. <laughs> <laughs> so it just becomes part of the decor. Uh, I'm just putting them under there for now. And then I grabbed that Sprigs and Sentiment set. And I'm going to stamp a whole bunch of these and die cut them. I keep all my scraps of White Daisy cardstock. So I grabbed a piece from my stash there that's been all cut into. And then I just start laying out the stamps to kind of figure out which ones I wanted to use. And then I grabbed the Sage ink 
and I'm actually going to use um, second generation. So I'm stamping off to the side there before I stamp onto the white. I want the outline to be very faint because when I color it, I want it to be more like a no line coloring. Sage is already a lighter green, so you can probably see it's a very faint line here by the time I do second generation. So I die cut all of those, had to go through a couple of passes, and now I'm grabbing my Prismacolor pencils and I'm gonna shade these in with pencils. So I'm not gonna bore you with long stretches of coloring footage. I'm just gonna show you one and then I did the same thing on the other pieces. So I wanted some of these to be more a yellow green and some of them to be kind of a cooler green. So this is my more yellow green color combination. I'm starting off with an all over kind of very light coat of the lime peel color. And then I'm going to go in and shade it with the darker olive green color. And now Prismacolors are quite soft. So I did have to sharpen my pencils to get the nice fine point on it. I used that nice sharp point to outline the stems of the leaves. And then I'm going up and just making lots of little stroke marks so that it's darkest at the base of the leaf and then kind of fades off towards the top. You'll be able to see this even better when I do a close up after I've colored this whole thing. So for my other green combination, I used Kelly green and Marine green. Doesn't really matter, use what you have. Basically, I was just looking for a lighter color and a darker color that it either has like a more yellowish green tone or more of like a bluish green tone to it. So just use what you have and try it out. I'm sure it will work. You can also use watercolor pencils the exact same way, just don't add water. If you're not interested in spending a lot of time coloring, you could also use alcohol markers. They tend to go a little bit faster or you could just stamp these in a darker green and leave them just as an outline. Here is a close up look at that finished leaf. So you can see all the texture of those individual little strokes. That's my favorite thing about coloring with pencils. All right, so you can see I've kind of clustered things on the left hand side there under the tags. I have those leaves there. I also pulled some of the leaves and a flower from the die cut sheet. Uh, I love the detailed outlines that they have. I'm putting some twine through the holes of my tags and I'm gonna trim it up afterwards, but I just wanted to get it on there and see how it looked. This is just some brown twine from my stash. I have a hard time putting naked tags on a page. I always feel like they need something, some twine, a bow, something on them through the hole. So this works really good. And then I'm just sticking them down into place. All right, so all those leaves, I stuck them down off camera and now I'm pulling in my title. I cut this on my Cricut on just regular craft cardstock and I'm using two fonts for my title. So I will list both those down in the description box along with all the other supplies that I'm using on this layout. If you're enjoying this video so far, I would love it if you'd hit the like button. It lets YouTube know that they should show it to more people. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. I usually post one video a week and uh, that way you won't miss any of my future uploads. So this title, I have this kind of big chunky word down first, and then I cut this very detailed scripty part of the title that says my hero and I used Harbor cardstock to cut that. And then I put a layer of liquid glass over the top of it while it was on my all purpose mat and just let it dry. So that part was already dry. I didn't have to worry about spilling it on my page. And then I just glued these into place. They do take a little bit of time. I kind of had to hold them in place to let them kind of tack up and adhere. My journaling I did on my computer because I had so much to say. I had to keep like sizing the font down. <laughs> and it ended up being some really long journaling. So I ended up with I think 11 point font. And I just cut it all up into little strips. I'm not going to make you watch me get these straight. There you go, you can see what it looks like once they're all attached. So I decided this area needed a little something. So now you're gonna watch me fuss around for a little bit with these hearts. I swap them out and switch hearts and move them around. Finally, I decide on, okay, that's where I'm going to put them and then I commit and glue them down. I love the die cut pack that comes with the Hope and Kindness collection. 
Uh, you can order it by itself or as part of a collection pack. And it has so many really good usable die cuts in it. Now I'm working on this last little area of embellishment. I wanted another point to draw your eye to down here at the bottom. Plus it looked a little bit empty. So I'm just figuring out where I'm going to put the leaves and the die cut leaves and that heart. I grabbed my Perfectly Imperfect stamp set and there's some really cute little borders on there. So I grabbed this sketchy heart, looks like hand-drawn hearts. And I'm just gonna stamp that all along the bottom using Harbor ink. Just adds one more little layer of detail, uh, but I think it adds instead of taking away. And I really like that I decided to put this along the bottom, kind of fills up that area a little bit more so it doesn't look so empty. I've really made it a point lately to try and use more stamps on my layouts. Usually that's the first thing I grab when I'm gonna make a card, but not so much on pages. And I'm really enjoying using my stamps on my scrapbook pages. I'd love to know in the comments below if you guys use stamps on your layouts too. I decided while I was at it, I might as well add some splatter on my pages. So I grabbed the Perfectly Imperfect, the smallest little cluster of splatters, and I'm using Sage ink. I debated using Harbor ink, but then I thought, eh, it might be too dark and draw the eye too much. I just wanted something subtle to just add around all my clusters and just add a little bit more detail, but without taking away from the page. My final step is just going to be to arrange that little cluster in the bottom with the heart. I didn't show the steps of me coloring those leaves, but it's the same that I did with the other leaves. I'm gonna put those down first, then add the detailed die cut leaves over top, and then that heart will get put on with foam dots. I did end up trimming off the stems on those leaves just cause they were a little bit long and I found they were sticking out past the heart. All right, and those are my finished pages. I'm gonna hold it up a little bit closer here so hopefully you can see some of those details. And I love the coloring on the leaves and the title. I think everything came together really well. I did choose to use some black and white photos in between my color photos, um, just because the colors didn't really work. You can see how my camera does not like the color of my little scene there. <laughs> it was horrible to try and photograph this, but I do have some still shots at the end here. So hopefully you can see some of those details even closer up. I hope you guys are ready for more inspiration. Uh, the creative design team is posting all week long. I'm the first starting it off here. Andrea is also posting a video today and I will have her video and the playlist for this collab uh, down in the description box. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.